Welcome to the Motorhome and Caravan Show with your hosts, Jay Malpass and Jason, the Motorhome Man Reynolds. First of all, it couldn't be your fault when his life and mine will fall. It will always be my car Trying to throw this shade on me Like they all hate on me Don't bring that rage on me Why they throwing shade on me Like they ashamed on me I thought what age are we? Uh -huh. It's warm outside And we all want shine Bet you nobody in the city could stay in the crib this time Whoa, got pics on the way like the vacay Shoot photo with the AK Got friends by my side, trying to have a great day And I wonder why they throw shades, yeah But it's all on me, let them roam free Like a European, yeah See me pick up the phone like I'm trying to haul a home Starting to act like E.T. Yeah, rock them shades, now they can't see me Trying to run away, but I'm not speedy Need no fake, I just want what's real And I ride that way till I'm free, yeah Trying to throw yeah. this shade on me Like they all hate on me Don't bring that rage on me No rage Evening Good evening, how was one? I'm alright Another night, another Sunday, another show I know, I know It's getting a bit wet and windy out there now though what happened last week? I, I, I'm still trying to work out what happened last week. It was a bit of a blur. In a good, good way. Good show, though. It was. It was a good was, show. Yeah, good show that was, mate. I think, to be honest, if we hadn't have done so many shows, that would have turned into a three, four-hour ball fest, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was cut down nicely. I know my timekeeping wasn't very good on people's answers, but it at least everybody got the point across. Yeah. So, let's move on, eh? So, tonight, we're having... I'm going to give you, Shane, a bulk beds motorhome under six metres. Which is quite a rare thing. You don't get any many that short with that sort of layout, do you? Mark's going to show us a twin and a single axle caravan. Oh. Yep. John's actually doing a video of a campsite he's been to. <laughs> no, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Honest. Let me have a look. Yes, he is. Let me have a look. He is. Mm. Yes. And ask Lee technical questions. So get your questions in. He's here from half seven till half eight. So get your questions in. He'll note them down. Make some notes with one eye on Liverpool losing, um, and answer some questions. <laughs> what? Is is it 1-0, it was that, Lee? I couldn't quite tell what you was holding up there. Yes, 1-0, 1-0 apparently. Yeah. Shall we crack on with it then? We shall, yes. Yeah, let's crack on. I'm going to show you, Shane, a motorhome with bunk beds under six metres. Okay, far away. Have a look at this. Yeah, in the stove, in the stove, stove. on the corner of my road. I should have took the boat to the boat. Yeah, I could have took the boat. Yeah, I could have took it. Yeah, I'll be in a fuss. All my friends going up. Yeah, yeah who's there with a bug now? Look what we've just added. Auto Trail XL 600. It's a four berth with four belted seats and it's just under six meters long. It's a 2.2. Um, so it's a chain, not a cam belt. What's happened there? John. Whack it back all together, mate. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was my fault. I was trying to rename a video. See, we are live. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's try again. So today I'm going to show you bulk bed <laughs> motor one to six metres. On the corner of my road, I should have took the boat. Yeah, I could have took the boat. Yeah, I could have took it. Yeah, I'll be in a fuss. All my 
my friends going up. Look what we've just added. Auto Trail XL 600. It's a full berth with four belted seats and it's just under six meters long. It's a 2.2, um, so it's a chain, not a cam belt. And it weighs 3,300 kilograms. So let's have a look inside this XL. So, as you can imagine, it's a six meters, just under six meters, so it is quite a compact van. So, while we're at the back, we'll start at the back. We have a bunk beds there. And then we have toilet with a separate shower. And then we have the hops, um, grill, oven, fridge. And then we also have the sink. And then just moving towards the back, front, sorry. We have the living area. So what you can do, you've got your two belted seat belts here. And then this will come up here so you can travel, so you can basically travel. And then this will make into a bed area. So this pops out. And then it will make up into a quite a, it's not a big bed. Um, probably really I'd say is a single bed. So again, they are saying it's a four berth. Yes, you probably could put two kids here. Um, but really enough big enough size just for an adult. And then we've got the swivel seats, which make in quite a big then living area. Um, so what we've got here, we've got a big skylight, uh, plenty of cupboard area all the way along. Um, the main um, thing uh, with the van is we've got the two bunk beds, so that is taking up a chunk of the room. But it's quite a compact van really, um, giving you everything you need. We do have a whale system um, for the heating and not water, so that works off the diesel engine, just like the lorries. The van is on a Fiat Decato, it's got reversing camera, it's 5 speed with CD radio. Auto Trail XL, a compact van under 6 metres, so two adults and one child, it'd be absolutely perfect for. On the corner of my road, I should have took the boat, yeah I could have took the boat, yeah I'll be in a fuss. All my friends going up. Yeah, who's the real bug now? What's up? You're showing off now, aren't you? Do you like that? I bet you can't even remember what what motorhome you did. It was all about the drone. No, it's an Auto Trail 600 XL. 600 what? XL. <laughs> <laughs> Packed a lot in there, didn't they, for six meters? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I can't work out whether it's a good layout or bad layout for the size. It's a good compact van, mate. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, that bed at the front, um, it's probably really only a single, to be honest with you, or for two small kids. I guess it depends if you don't mind bunks. So, uh, just a different option, something I've not seen before. No, you don't come across them very often, the XLs, because obviously they weren't around for too long. Probably four years, something like that, 08 to 12, if, if I was to guess off the top of my head. Yeah. Also means that we're not popular then. I'm just trying to think what it had been replaced by. Well, there we go. Tribute, maybe. Tribute, tribute. I think they were replaced by that, I reckon. There we go. Do you want to have a look at the caravan then? Yeah. Who do, we do, who do we need for that? Mark? <laughs> Ooh, hello, evening. Oh. You're at any kind of my news? Um, there's a little bit out there at the minute, actually. Uh, not great news, in all honesty, because Lunar Caravans, I don't know whether you've heard, there's still a bit of a, a thing with furlough pay. It doesn't seem like the employees have been getting the furlough pay. Uh, Lunar Caravans, and this is all hearsay, this is just sort of what's out there at the moment. So, it's not coming from the horse, the horse's mouth. Um, so it is it is here. So, but apparently they're not getting paid. They're getting the furlough pay. I've not seen any news of new 2021 Lunars out there yet. So if anybody has, please be out there. But yeah, that's a bit naughty, to be fair, because they've only just been taken over. And I thought, oh, this will be a nice new start for Lunar. It'll be a good fresh book. 
it hasn't been the best of starts. So uh, that is naughty, isn't it? Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's not good. It's not good. Uh, moving on to a bit more positive, Coachman okay. have have rebranded slightly, so they've they've moved to the. Um, I've got a feeling it was the Road to Freedom is their new tagline. Um, they've they've gone completely fresh. They've been setting the ways a little bit, so they've they've tried to update things, come out with a new branding. They're actually doing some really good offers at the moment up until thirty first of October. So if you head over to Coachman, have a look at their new stuff. They've got some nice new designs. I think Jimmy Sub son now. Uh, unfortunately, Jim, Jimmy passed away some time ago. His son now is taken over the company, and he's he's moving it forward. He's moving with the time. So that's quite interesting to see because they've always been a not a massive build. Uh, they don't build huge amounts, but they build good vans. They do build really good vans. So that that will be interesting. Are they owned by anybody, Coachman, or are they standalone? Uh, it is it is the Hibbs family, yeah. Um, so it is it is that family that sort of own own the company. There might be other investors as well, but it's sort of uh, Jim Hibbs' son now that sort of fronts it and he's pushing it forward. So, and then another little bit of information: practical caravan. Obviously, the NEC show isn't happening. Um, in October, so we're going to miss out on that. But Practical Caravan are doing the van live. That starts 12th of October. There's going to be um, live halls, basically, where you can log in and go and have a look around new, new, new products. There's going to be UK manufacturers' halls. There's going to be continental manufacturers' hall. There's a dealer's hall. I just thought that's going to be dealer specials and um, I like accessories, so different accessories out there tour insights and then the best of the rest so that, that'll be quite interesting as a bit of a replacement i think possibly for the nec show um and then going a little bit more again sorry fast and frantic but news is still <laughs> out there at the minute that the february nec might be happening who knows I, whether that will i don't know i, ha but that's what I have I, I have seen a lot of manufacturers advertising that february show yeah but I think, I think there'd be... Wishful uh, thinking. Yeah, just, just to say the least, yeah. Yeah. I can't see. You never know. You never know. We can we can hope. What have you so, got for us, though? We, we're looking at twin axle against single axle. I think we get okay. asked this a lot with the caravan side of it. Should I... What, why, what's the difference? Can I go for a twin? Can I go for a single? So we're just going to point out a few little bits... We've got a Bailey Unicorn Cartagena. It's 2018. It's twin axle. And it's a nice big van. Let's have a look at our BT. So on this week's show, we're looking at twin axles against single axles. Our first caravan is a twin axle, which is the Bailey Unicorn Cartagena. It's 26 feet overall, so it's about two foot bigger than the biggest single axles out there. Let's have a look inside and see what difference we get being on a twin axle. So inside the Bailey Unicorn Cartagena, as I say, it's about two foot bigger than a lot of the single axles out there. So again, on the front seating area, we get quite a nice long front seating area. We can actually use these quite comfortably as single beds. We've got a nice big kitchen area. So again, we've got a fold up unit on here and it gives us plenty of workspace. And again, it doesn't feel claustrophobic. People can walk past each other while you're in the kitchen area and you're not going to be bumping into each other. Another big advantage on this is we get the big fridge freezer. It's not the slim line, it is the big chunky fridge as well. So uh, we get that. And then into the bedroom area. I think, I think Bailey actually had got me in mind when they built this van. Look at the bed, it's tiny. Perfect for me. But maybe not for you, but only joking. The bottom on this actually folds up and then there is a cushion that drops in again you'd normally just keep this on the on the bed so if you are that bit bigger you have got the proper full size bed and then again in the washroom we get a nice size washroom in there with a proper separate shower and toilet
So being on the twin axle, we do just gain the extra length inside. There is fours and against for both. Uh, personally, we prefer a twin axle, um, but we've not got any issues with storage and tow vehicles, etc. So it is, if you can go for a twin axle and you've, you feel comfortable towing a bigger, heavier van, um, you do gain a lot, but again, you just lose out in the maneuverability. If you've got to push it around by hand, you definitely, I think we're gonna probably need motor movers. That's a good looking van. I like that. Good, good size that is, yeah. And again, that's we're going to the twin, you get a bigger van. Um, it's only 1682, so it's not a big, heavy two-ton van at all. So it's a good a good weight for a, a twin axle. Um, so if you do, if you are restricted on your license, you could possibly just about squeeze in with your car and caravan under the three and a half ton. Uh, it'd be very close, but it's it's possibly just about doable. Um, but it just gives you that freedom of going for a bigger van if you want that bit extra space. You do it does it does feel a, a lot bigger van in there, and it does make a big difference. I think the only problem you do get there though is with having the bathroom at the back. If there's four of you sleeping in there, they've got to walk straight through the bedroom as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but not it's really a really sort of a van where you could take family or friends away. It's more of a family van, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's a nice looking interior. Different. That's very modern yeah really nice very nice yeah yeah nice fun that is mate all right you've got a single axle for us later on have you yeah so compare the two see you in a bit then see you in a bit in a bit good looking van that was wasn't it it was actually i do like the twin axles if i was going to have one to be honest but similar reason to what um to what mark said because you just get that extra little bit of space Here's one for you then, Andrew Austin. Evening, everyone. I've been looking at the T58 Motorhome as a possibility, but the videos that I have seen have either had no information about it verbally or had music on. What are your thoughts? So the sun, I'm assuming that's a sunlight by death left. Um, they are at the more reasonably priced end of the market, but you can get some nice packs on them. I mean, I don't know about this year, but you can get the actives and so on, which puts sort of like the nice silver sides and alloys and bits like that on. Um, I, I quite like them personally. They do tend to, uh, was it the death letter? The sunlight that we were looking at the show? I can't quite remember where there was that, uh, that, that gentleman that kept came in, coming into the video and butting in. Do you remember Oh, my new friend. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. I, I can't remember if that was the sunlights or not, but yes, uh, the, the definitely nice definitely. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was definitely oh, yeah. deathless. Yeah. So yeah, so they are nice vans. The reason why there's not many videos with any sort of sound is because people are lazy. I think that's the best way, isn't it? There's only us. I do. Uh, yeah. And Mark. Well, we've we've done the death. Yeah, if they have a look through our history, we did the deathless, didn't we? We would have done something possibly. Yeah. I don't know whether I ended up putting mine up because I. Could, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't bear to see him again. Yeah, I put it up. So yeah, yeah there is a definitely out there. If you have a look on on uh, my back videos, you'll find it. Um, yeah. Hypothetically, oh, no, I nailed that word. Thinking sixty-five k <laughs> to spend, would you go new or used motorhome? Uh... I'd probably go used. Yeah, I would. One or two years old. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, something like that. A year old. Two years old, maybe. So it's still under the warranty. As long as it's got its stamps in the book, all being well. So it's got its five-year water ingress warranty right. and so on. We're right, because Lee and Laurie, Laurie, Lee and Laurie, Laurie, Lee and Laurie, Lee and Laurie, said go used. So we're right anyway. There you go. <laughs> Shall we get the main one on? I think it's a bit dis uh, depressed at the moment. <laughs> Is it still 1-0? No, wonder. it's 2-1. It's going wrong. <laughs> Is it 2-1 to you, Lee? That's not really. <laughs> Pardon? Sorry, sorry I, I must be able to... I got it. Yeah, it's all right. Don't worry, you don't need to hear it. <laughs> Right. I'm all right. What have you got for us, mate? What have I got for you? Um, well, I've had um, a few electrical um, 
calls over the last few weeks. Right. Um, now, the thing I've got is people get quite mixed up when they're talking about things tripping out. So I thought I'll give people a bit of a heads up. What do you mean by tripping out then, Lee? Well, I'm getting what calls from mean? people saying I'm putting things on and things are tripping out. Now, obviously, if things are tripping out on the RCD side of things, then you've got a fault. If it's tripping out on an MCB, then you're overloading a circuit majority of the time, unless there's a faulty MCB or, or, or such. Right. But what's, what's the difference? Get... Yeah, what's the difference? Right. What do they mean? Right. This is what I was going to do, but you're just jumping in. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the difference being you have two parts. You'll have the RCD, which is a residual current device. Now, that protects the van against earth leakage, etc. That's the one that you have that's got the little test button on it. Yeah. Have you got a picture of that? You right, should so have. Which one do, you want? It, yeah. do you, want, you want Lee 1? The yeah? RCD. The RCD. Well, you just put it as Lee 1. I'm going to go with R Lee 1. That's the wrong no, one. That's, M that's an MCB. Oh. That's the one. Right. So that's your RCD. So you've got a little test button on there. Right. Now, that will trip when you've got a fault with something. Um, now, I also get a lot of calls where, say, people will say, I've got no power in the van, nothing's working in the van. A real easy way to test if it's anything with your van is to press that test button because that test button will only trip or, or flick off um, when you press the test if there's power connected to the van. So if you press that test button and it doesn't shut off, then you've got no supply coming to the van. Okay. Um, so that one there is for protection against faults on the on the um, electrics. Now the other side are the MCBs. Did, They're your miniature comments, circuit sorry, breakers. So so the numbers that these were. So the first one was two, and the second one was one. In, in terms of the photos, what was the oh, score I again? Got Lee? Wrong. <sighs> Sorry, go on. <sighs> it's going to be one of them nights, is it? <laughs> yep. There's plenty of time. Yeah, it's plenty of time. Could be worse. Could be three one now. <laughs> right, I've got all night now because I'm not watching any more of that. So, so here we've got our MCBs. Right, now they're your circuit breakers. Now this is where people get confused because they'll knock one of these off and think that there's a fault with something and it's tripping out everything. Now if you look on there, you've got a C10, a C16 and a C10. Now the 10s there refer to um, the overload. So you've got a 10 amp, a 16 amp and another 10 amp. Your MCBs should be marked up with what's on each circuit. Don't take that for granted that they will be because people will add things on and it won't be marked up. But the big thing is those will go off when you overload your circuit, not with a fault. What so when I get calls, circuit, Dudley? so say, say you've got a three kilowatt ALDA system that's pulling around about 13 amps. Now, then you go and flick on your um, kettle which you've probably got a two kilowatt kettle that's another eight amps all of a sudden you've got 21 amps of power trying to pull into the van now most posts are on a, on a mcb like that which is a 16 amp hookup you will trip that off yeah people i get a lot of calls of late and i, th I think it's a lot of people who are new to caravanning and motorhoming who don't don't understand what's tripping when you say um are you tripping your rcd or the mcb and they'll say not sure until you try and explain it so i thought just put them out there so people can realize the difference that one there will 90 percent of the time be that you're overloading the circuit the other one the rcd will be a fault with something on the system now the best way to do that is to switch everything off electrically and switch each individual item back on until you get a trip that will help you find out what is causing you the problem. So, 
if we have an almond go down on the fridge, it normally trips out the uh, the first one, doesn't it? The RCD, yeah. If if you've got yeah. an earth leakage pot on it, I mean, if you get you can have an element go and it just loses its resistance mm. and it doesn't break down, so it just won't work. But the uh, if if it fails and faults down to earth, then yeah, it'll trip your RCD rather and then, than your MTB. If we've got our Aldi heating system on 3K, we've got the tally on, we've got the kettle on. Um, we've also decided to um, put straighteners on and an air dryer on. We're overloaded, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. And the yeah, microwave. Yeah. Pete, th there's a lot of people new to caravanning who, who are un unaware of how much they can actually use when they go onto a site. I mean, there are still some sites out there that are still 10 amp. You know, and straight away you switch a, a three kilowatt alpha system on, and you're going to trip it out. But you're going to trip out an overload. I, th I think we have to think a little bit different when we're in the caravan or the motor home, don't we? Like at home, we're yeah. spoiled, yeah. aren't we? Yeah, that's right. The, your MCBs are basically a replacement for the old fuse type system. So when you used to have the old cartridge fuse in your in your board at home and things like that with the old wire fuses as they used to be some you know some time ago those were replaced with an mcb which is a, a basically the 230 version of a fuse just just very quickly i'm just going to jump in there though so i bought so i got found, finally got the keys for my house this week now would this would this do the job <laughs> yeah i think you do a new one mate <laughs> so one, one do the job now so the, no. the, the, the moral of the story there we can pretty much tell if we're overloaded or if we've got a fault yeah yeah that's right and like i said the the other handy little tip from that is if you get into a site and you feel you've got no power coming into your van press that test button if it trips off then yes, something's not right within the van. If it doesn't trip off, then there's a problem with your supply to the van. Yeah, and we've got we basically got no I power say, coming into the van. Yeah, I would say I probably receive probably about 20, 30 calls like that a year, right? And 95% of the time, I will say, press that test button. It doesn't trip off. They go outside and it's a problem with the supply. Okay, it's full one now. <laughs> Better not be, otherwise you'll... There's a problem here. My phone won't work. <laughs> you just put that up. Seriously, it's 4-1. It's 4-1. Here you go, Lee. Look, that's... Lee, Lee. Oh. <laughs> um, any, any, anything else, Lee? I don't know. I've lost the will then. Okay. Well, why just um, <laughs> subs for a little bit? If you want to get any more questions on, he's here till about half past eight um, to answer any questions. Um, we'll see you in a minute, Lee, eh? Yeah, all right. Cheers, Lee. Bye. Oh, love it when a plan comes together. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. What do you guys use to dampen all the noise in your motorhome whilst on the move? towels it depends what i've got because basically when, when we go out to pick to buy something it's it's an empty shell or the sorry not an empty shell but there's nothing in it so it is only the grill pan which we take out and then the glass over the hob that bounces up and down so something under there what about you jason nothing i mean the other thing i do use is a set of headphones that tends to dampen out the sound yeah just do the radio up. yeah you got two kids, they're making enough noise anyway. You just become mm -hmm. immune to noise. Uh, shall we have a look at the campsite? We shall. Evening. Evening, you all right? Again? Yes, I am. You? Yeah, what have you got for us? Tonight, <clears throat> uh, we are looking at one of my uh, go to campsites for autumn and uh, winter camping. It's now, it's not a million miles away from us, but uh, yeah, it's one of our little go to's. And I, in a way, I begrudge putting this up because it's our little secret, <laughs> it's our little gem of a site that's not a million miles from home, but 
it has some amazing facilities and uh, yeah, fairly reasonably priced as well. But um, let's have a look at the video and uh, we can we can chat about it afterwards. Okay. Shane, run VT. Is this the one that we've already seen? It's, by number, the way? 10. it's number 10, the one I tried to rename while the other one was going. <laughs> So this is the swimming pool area at Lincoln Farm Park. This is pool two. What do you reckon, dude? Oh, uh, very big. Very big. So just pan around. The pool is 1.3 meters deep uh, all the way along. Um, there is a small child's pool there, um, which is a bit smaller. I'm starting to steam up. The camera's starting to steam up. Give me a second. So there's the small child's pool there and there's also a, um, a jacuzzi, spa pool, um, we've got showers, a steam room and a sauna over there as well and there's toilets, ladies and gents, and gents toilets here. So everything you need. Uh, there's lockers in the changing rooms, there are people in the changing rooms at the moment so I'm not going to show you the, um, the changing rooms but there are lockers in there but to be fair um, we generally just bring our stuff and put it in on the chairs here, they're happy with that. So just give you a quick look around, it's lovely, it's nice and warm, the pool's nice and warm. Oh there's loads of chairs. There's loads of chairs, yeah. There we go. So that's a, a look, quick look inside the um, pool area at Lincoln Farm. I love that's, that site. That's a nice clean site, isn't it? Mate, it is. It really is a little gem. Um, so it's it's called Lincoln Farm Park. It's just outside Oxford um, in a, a little village called Stanlake. And um, it's we, we've been there, God, God so many times. Um, it's open open all year round now, um, and you can get pitches from from twenty four pounds a night. Uh, there are seventy two pitches. 
and 24 of those are fully serviced. And it can even accommodate motorhomes up to 38 feet. We've seen some absolutely huge motorhomes on, on that site. It really is a little peach. And, and the best thing, like I say, for us, it's got two swimming pools. It's got a gym the sauna, jacuzzi, you can even hire it out just for your family. And probably pre-COVID, um, we've done it before where we've, we've hired it out and it's just our, our friends that are there. Um, we hire the pool for an hour and kids jumping around, loving it. Absolutely brilliant. Um, as you saw in the video, there's a pub just on the entrance to the site, which is a good one. But a little top tip, um, if I just bring up uh, this one here, there is a, a just outside the camp, um, outside the campsite where that pub was. You go across the road and there's this this walk and it's called the Windrush Path Walk. And you follow uh, the walk along and it takes you through some amazing scenery all the way through um, little foresty areas. And um, you end up at a place called uh, the Rose Revive Pub. Now you actually come past this pub um, over the bridges as you're coming towards Stand Lake to get into the, the campsite. And um, they serve amazing food. Um, they're dog friendly. And it's, it's, a good, it's a good hour and a half, two hour walk. Now we tried it last time we were there it was February um, and all the fields were flooded. So we couldn't do the walk all the way to, to the Rose Revive pub. But just for, for in, during the summer months or when it's dry, a walk from the campsite with the dogs, kids, or just, just yourself down to the pub, a couple of little pints, sit out, look, overlooking the river. There's a massive beer garden, have a pint, and then a little wander back. And you, you're completely off-road. Uh, it's, it's a lovely little place. Really is a nice little site. You've done yourself I'm proud of that one. I, yeah, and I made it myself. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. What was the piece of concrete of the water? Piece of concrete? That, oh, that, that, that's a... Uh, um, Shane will know that. What's it called, yeah. Shane? Oh, it's a, a, to me, it looks like an old watch, watch out post. Yep, it is. I'm guessing it's, got, I'm guessing it's got the slats in the side so you can look that's through. That's it. Yep. And you go over the... See the bridge on the, the right-hand side. You, you walk across the bridge um and were they called i want to say a pillow box pillow box you were pillow boxes yeah you're right yeah, pillow boxes. yeah. Mm. um but no it's in a funny place though didn't they mm. it's it really is like i say was, um even over the winter it's it's a lovely site and um like i say that's that's one of our local go-to sites um and just just because of the facilities there as well we can you can entertain the kids there's a big play park and and in fairness to the owners they've they've invested a lot of money into that site over the last 12 months there's a new play park there the grounds are always really well cut there's a small dog area um and off the lead area um it's not huge but it's it's almost like it runs the length of the uh, of the side, one side of the um of the campsite and uh, enough for, for the dog to come off, have a little run. But like I say, you don't have to go far to be completely in the sticks. It really is. Uh, it is a, a little gem. And I, like I say, I was a little bit, shall I put this one up? Because I don't want everybody hearing about it. <laughs> no, I don't. That's a nice concert, mate. It is. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice concert. Concert. So um, yeah. you can you can book online and <clears throat> just, uh, just have a little look on um, uh, Google, uh, Google Lincoln Farm Park. And it'll come up. And uh, yeah, certainly if you're traveling down or if you're in this area, have not been to that site before, then uh, certainly worth a punt. Certainly. Okie dokie. You've done yourself proud. We'll see you in a bit, matey. Okay. See you in a bit. Good job. Th He's done well there, hasn't he? I know. I've got a long list of jokes written down about him not doing any work. I know. I'll have to save for next week. They'll come back. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we have a look at the caravan? We shall. Let's get him back on. Hello again. Okay. Just before you go, uh, Giles, just before you start, Mark, if you want to get your questions in for Lee, any technical questions, any advice, anything you want to know, get them in. Um, we'll be bringing him on again in another 15 or 20 minutes to answer any questions. So what have we got, Mark? So we're going to look at a single axle this time, same sort of layout. So let's have a look at what the difference is if we go for that layout on a single axle, which will be smaller. Roll, PT. 
So our second video is of the Luna Quasar 574. Now this is on the single axle, so it is a smaller van. It's about 24 foot overall, so it's about two foot difference. If you want to, well I really don't mind. That's how much I want you. Yeah, yeah. I know it's only been three weeks and you're a little insecure. But let me tell you when I'm feeling. Let's have a look inside and see I'm where the difference is. is. So inside of the caravan, we've got noticeably smaller front seating area. These are smaller. Again, I, I can probably lay out to be fair. It's probably enough room for me, but it might not be for you. We've got a good sized kitchen area. And again, we've got a little fold up extension. So it does make into a huge amount of preparation area. We've got the smaller fridge freezer and then moving towards the back again we've got the transverse island bed it's a bit bigger bed this one it might be too big for me to be fair this one no that's that's not too bad it does still extend out so it can pull out and just add the little bit of extra room if you want but it does then just create it a little bit tighter around the bed again we've got the big washroom at the back not quite as roomy as the twin axle but it's not a bad size So I think it's quite clear to see being on the single axle we've got to compromise we've got to be a little bit shorter so shorter front seating kitchen area is still a good size but we don't get that big fridge freezer and then just a little bit smaller towards the back end but again obviously a lot easier to maneuver more cars are going to be able to tow this so both fans really fours and against Can I just say the videos are getting oh. better and better? Yeah, it was uh, not bad that one. I, I need to get the drone out a bit more, but yeah. the weather wasn't great this week. And with the little um, sticky subscribe thing at the end as well. Yeah, did you like that? Get that video. Yeah. Come on, people, get over. <laughs> um, right, caravan. Um, take some beating that first one, did? Yeah, that wasn't. I mean, that that was only thirteen ninety. That one there um so again i don't know if, if you're restricted on your car that was a good compromise if you didn't want to go for the bigger van because again some people still sort of say well i don't want to be towing a big thing if i'm going around devon or cornwall and getting into the tighter little lanes and whatever i don't want a huge van on the back and that was a good a good compromise where you still got a good roomy van it felt spacious but again it, it's all down to i think for me i like the twin but it's we we tow every single day basically so it's not any issue having the extra length the, the, the problem you did though you spoiled me with the first one yeah i should have played that second shouldn't i yeah um you could also see the difference in quality in the um in the hatches and everything else as well yeah Massive yeah again i think um mind you to be fair they, they were both lightweight vans for for what they were but the bailey had just got the the edge on the quality really and again the the lockers in that bailey were huge absolutely massive it's a shame we didn't open them up to be fair to sort of show how big they were there was absolutely huge but yeah. that's what you get from the twin so um yeah yeah i can I, I can see with the other van as well um obviously with the towing side of it as well yeah it's, it's trying to it's Everyone's different, aren't they, of what they needs, whether they want caravan motor home or, and some people will go, oh, I don't really like the towing, but I can get away with a, a single, I feel more comfortable. But there is the other side where people actually say, I feel more comfortable with a twin axle because it, it's more stable on the road. So it's, it's I, a difficult I, I, I always, yeah, I always prefer towing the tags. Yeah, yeah. It does, they it's do tow better. But again, do they? now if you look at all a lot of the new ones now where they've got the atc you've got the alco stabilized itch or the winter off itch the singles tow pretty well 
anyway as well to be fair but the the twin will always have that edge hmm. two good videos have we cheers all right what have you got for next week uh, I might do a single bed. I've only got one single bed at the minute, so I might mix that up with something different. I noticed somebody in the comments said, oh, we like single beds. It's more roomy, a bit more spacious. So I might try that next week and see see what I can put with that. All right, then, mate. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. Cheers, Rob. Now, you never actually told me what motor home you're going to do tonight. Well... I thought it was quite fitting because we were doing bunk beds, weren't we? Hmm. And the motor home that I was going to do was rather damp. Oh. So we didn't end up going to buy it. So I thought, well, what better? Because that, that was a bunk bed model that we was going to. Uh, so I thought, what better to talk about than how to damp test loosely? Okay. Because there's a, one thing I do see a lot on Facebook forums is what damp meter do you buy and how do you damp test and do you need to do a habitation check every year? And for me, the answer is yes. So I'll just show you a little bit about damp on this video. Okay. Okay, so today we're talking damp meters. I'm going to start off with the damp meter itself and we have the Protometer Survey Master. So this is one of many that you can get. I think last time I looked, they're just over £400. Sounds a lot, but damp is a lot more expensive than that. Trust me, I'll show you a few examples shortly. So, first of all, we've got the Protometer Survey Master itself. We've got the on button and a hold button, and that also switches between the two modes, which is the scanner, which is on the back, which is basically touch. So as you can probably see, it's showing 999. That's basically 100% damp. So very moist indeed and we don't like moist in motorhomes or caravans certain situations maybe so and then we've also got the arrow there now that changes it to the pins the pins are under this now this is the more traditional way to damp uh, test your motorhome you put the pin the pins into the wood and as you can see it, that does hurt yes but it's, it's reading as uh, it's moist moisture meter so yeah so let me show you a couple of examples like i said these are just over 400 pounds i think of now but well worth the money and for me the damp meter that all the professionals and anybody should be buying when they get one let's go and have a look at some examples okay so this is a very good example of damp indeed you can see there's a strip that goes all the way through of blue now there's a couple of myths out there. One is you can always see damp and one is you can always smell damp. I'm struggling to think of any times I've really ever been able to smell damp in a motorhome. It's either a meter reading, blue staining like this, which really doesn't look good, or it goes soft and you can feel it, or it even goes pimply. So as you can see, it is blue there, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna read even though it has been leaking. And that is at the end of the day, what has made it go blue. But if you go up to this far end, it is at 100%. And it's a great example. I mean, even you can't quite see it, but on this shelf just behind, there is mould where the water has sat and just not gone very nice. Now, there's another one I'm going to show you next, which is completely different and probably unexpected to a lot of people. Again, it's a bit of the myth. So yeah, so with that switch, something I will just add to that, there was a quote from Marquis to fix that repair. There was about three and a half thousand pounds just for that over cab section. Now, if you think about how much that damp meter is at just over 400 pounds, it's a lot more just to get that sort of damp done. And then when you do end up peeling it back, you don't know what else you're gonna find because sometimes you can keep going and keep going and keep going and all of a sudden, there's a hell of a lot more than three and a half grand's worth of damp. So, next one I want to talk about is aluminium chassis. chassis. Bailey do the Alutec, which you'd think, because there's no wood in the sides, that it's not going to get damp. But let me go and show you. So, no, before you say it, I'm not the gremlin under the bed. That's the damp. So, if I get my meter here, which is on and it's on the scanner, and I put it into the corner, it's showing at once 100% across that back rail. Now, just because the, the sides are aluminium doesn't mean that the floor isn't, and it's something you really do need to keep an eye on. People do think because they've got the aluminium sides, like on the Baileys and the Heimers, 
that you don't get damp, but you can. So this has had seven services, bearing in mind, so it's had every service which you should be doing. So the customer has done everything right. And last year, they even reportedly had their floor replaced by the selling dealer, which by the sound of that, that hasn't been done. So even though this is a bailing, it's not the best example, but this is what you want to be doing in most motorhomes. You want your damp meter, you want it on the scanner, and you want to be going through all the walls, going every little bit that you can see in the cupboards down the side of the toilet, pretty much every single sort of wall you can think of. Uh, the best advice is to get really close up to where you can imagine the joints are on the outside, so you know the roof into the side or around the windows or the floor and so on. And that's how you check for damp. That's a good video, mate. That's a good video. Can we just, while we talk about, well, well, let's bring Liam onto this one, mate. Not bad, that, hey? Not hey, bad, Grumpy. You think it's my job? Grumpy. What's your thoughts yeah. on that? Bailey. What, a damn Bailey? <laughs> Typical. Um... No, okay, okay. Let, 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 let's just where that floor basically um, was damp is. Did you anybody notice the hatch um, underneath the underneath the bench? There was a hatch there with that plastic tray. And what happens is the rubbers on them perish. The water gets through the hatch and it sits underneath the tray. And it was a common fault on the Baileys there with that tray. And then if you notice now on the newer stuff, they've stopped doing the hatch. It, it was also the on, the, on the front lockers, on the front corners. Um, what the, right. Is that caravans or motor homes? Caravans, that was. Um, they, right. they had the same type of door. To, it was uh, um, on the caravans. The, and they had that under bed one, same on the motor homes and the caravans. Um, and it was a real common fault. They were classed, actually, the front ones as wet lockers because they had a plastic tray in, and <laughs> they, they, they 95% were, were wet. They really were. Um, and they did away with those and started changing the lining of it so that it wouldn't show as damp, um, and it was a different interior to them. And that, that was um, up to about 2015, I think. And then a couple of years ago, they did away with those lockers altogether, and change the design on the caravans and then put in a roof strap and they're even worse because you've got a gap now you know of, of about so big between the the two panels and then they put a, a t-piece in there with sealant on it and it and they leak just as bad um i mean or you get it on all makes of van it's not just baileys um but yeah it was uh it was interesting you actually say about using the um survey master there um, I mean, that's the, that's the one I've got. I've got two of those, and I've got the, the Protometer Mini as well as a spare. Um, but one thing you never mention, I mean, you get a lot of people, and I see people who've, who've wanted to go and have a look at vans, and they've gone with a damp meter, and they've just jabbed those pins in the wall, um, and, and they make such a mess. A lot of modern vans, such as the Alutex, the new Swifts, Sprites, those sort of vans, um, and, and lunas, they're not wooden walls. So you go along with a pin and, and try and jab a pin meter into the wall, you're going to make a right mess. And, you know, if that was my man, someone was trying to, I was trying to sell it and someone come and did that, I'd be absolutely fuming. Um, I mean, AWS procedures for damp testing is we always use the scanner part of the, the um, uh, meter. And then if there is any damp shows, then you inv investigate then with the pin side of the meter to get a more accurate reading of, of what's what. But uh, yeah, that was good, that Shane. Um, I've seen Rob B's come in with a, with a question on there that sort of follows on from it as well. Um, in the winters, we have covering the motorhome with a cover to reduce damp. If, if, if your caravan doesn't leak, putting a cover on, in my opinion, won't make any difference. Um, the best thing you can do for winterizing it for if to if you're going to be leaving it for some time, take the cushions away from the walls, open up the floors, make sure the ventilation's safe. I mean, people say about putting moisture traps in and everything. I don't, I don't see the point unless you've got damp in the van already. Then, then it's a pointless thing. And again, 
with, like mm. Shane said, with the seeing it and smelling it, by the time you can smell damp in a caravan or a motorhome, it's too late. It's at a point then where it needs some serious repair work doing. What are the main common traits with damp then? Uh, what what you find in? Well, the main, right, we get damp in a motorhome or a caravan. Um, what's the main common cause? Would you say water ingress? Yeah, I know that. Where's he coming from? <laughs> would it be through? Would it be through the hatches, or would it be through not, not resealing the right. van, or what? Um, I mean, it could all, all depend on the age of the van as well, can't it? I mean, an old van where the seals are now starting to degrade, um, that it can be from there. It can be around roof lights. It can be around door hatches. It can be around wheel arches. Um, the elders are quite common to wheel arch leaks um, on the caravans. Um, elders in the elders in the, in the motor homes as well, just under the like, where the pop up seats are at the front. Yeah, the, the, it's terrible. It, it varies from van to van. I mean, it you can yeah. it can get in anywhere. And the thing is, once it gets in, it can it can travel. Once that water starts finding a way in, it'll find a route to go and it'll find its easiest route. And it may be that, I mean, I've done damp repairs before where you're thinking it's at the front of the van, you know, that the, the main patch of damp is at the front of the van. And when you start stripping wallboard back, you find it's actually coming from in a wardrobe yeah. a bit further back. And that's, um, but that's it's just been tracking down the wall. That's right. It's, it's, that's what a bit like I was saying with these, with the first motorhome is, yeah, it's been quoted three and a half grand from the dealer to fix it. But, doesn't mean it's going to stop there that's an estimate rather no. than a quote you don't know how far it's come or gone especially yeah, with that, that bailey though especially with that bailey that's the seals on the hatch early isn't it yeah yeah it's a real common problem with those and, and like i yeah. said the same on the front um it was a it, go on sorry mate just a quickie quest for camper are you less likely to get damp in a van build rather than a coach build um depends how well it's built to be fair i mean if you're start if you start the minute you start drilling holes in anything right. if if you don't seal it up properly and make sure that it's properly sealed then you're just as likely to get damp the, um, the, the main yeah. ones you, the main ones you're going to get damp from a van build is either through the skylights or the windows aren't you yeah 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 same as the auto sleepers <laughs> on the monocoque yeah yeah the, yeah the, the problem what Shane's done there by doing that video is opened a can of worms because we could do a whole show on damp company. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we could do a whole month's worth of shows on damp. Yeah. Would you say nearly every van had got some form of damping? Shane, you're nodding. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, obviously, um, it's obviously got small readings, but there's, it's, it's a majority more rather than, than a minority. Yeah, what, what people say, I mean, I give people a damp report and they'll have all the figures on of, of what the readings are throughout the van. And I'll say, okay, yeah, you're sort of, you're ranging between 12 and 14%. You might have a 15% here. Um, but they go, oh, so do I need to speak to one? No, they're, they're perfectly acceptable readings. A damp report should give you the numbers for the readings throughout the van. If you get a, a damp report that says to you, um, all okay, um, 10% all over or whatever, right? That's to me, that's not a damp report. Uh, <laughs> Lee, Lee, that's, how, Lee, just cut in there, mate, and that's my biggest bugbear there. How many habitation reports do you see with that on? I, I see loads. I see loads. The ones that I've done that they've bought the van the first time, and it just says, you know, all okay, no issues. Well, Okay, you, what one thing I say to people, yes, your van might be 8% all round and that back corner might have a 14 or 15% reading. Next year, that reading could be 16, 17%. Yeah. But because we've picked up that it's slightly higher than the rest next year, because that's creeping up, we can investigate now. Is is that an issue that's developing? Yeah. Or, or in a few months' time, is that an issue that's developing? And that, so, ba that Bailey there that Shane showed us, mate, that didn't happen overnight? No. No, the, the, the worst, no. the worst, the worst thing about that is he has had all the seven stamps in the book, and only ten months ago, I think it was, the dealer that sold it to him that's also done the services has said that they've done the floor on it. Mm. And I reckon another year or so, you'll be able to put your fingers through that floor. 
How long? What, let's be let's be realistic now. Yeah, but... Really, right? That should have been picked up probably two, three years ago. Um. Yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But so. no, no, it's, I mean, it's not, to, it's not... to be fair, saying that, I've just had a, I've just had a, a motorhome in. I mean, this I know the guy who owns it. He's paid seventy grand for this van last year, and when he went to pick it up, well, sorry, when he bought it, they rang him and said that he'd been broken into and a load of stuff stolen out of it. Now they put him a new satellite on it, put him new cupboards and everything in it. Um, he used it a couple of times, and then it's been stored all year. He's not used it until about three, four weeks ago when he decided to get it ready to go and do the North Coast 500. He's got in there and there's water dripping on the table, right? Now that van has been sat for about eight months since he last went in it. The wall is bubbling and it's soft to touch. So that, that wall is, you know, it needs replacement. It needs work doing to it. So if you've got quite a, quite a bit coming in, it can do damage quite quickly. Well, let, let's. There's there's a lesson to be learned. Though, really, you should be checking your van every month, shouldn't you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, I mean, a bit like I said in the video. I know that that damp meter, the pro meter, is survey master is four hundred odd quid, but just above that cab on that first motor home, they were quoting three and a half grand. So that's pet more than paid for itself. And just run across it every month or something like that. But we're just just going to run through a quick few uh, quick fire questions uh, for Lee. Quick answers. Can a damp test be done on a day that's raining outside? Yes. Yeah. Because... Otherwise, most days I wouldn't be able to do one. Um, <laughs> yeah, a dealer will tell you that you can't. You've got to bring it in and you've got to acclimatise the van to the inside. I mean, I've actually been to a dealer where they've told me that and I said, OK, if, if that's the case, you're getting a false reading because the van spends its life outside. Yeah. So. Uh, next one. Could it be broken seals on the motor that makes it damp? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, does it sound about right? Gary Squire, Swift Caravans had a problem with the roof cracking at the back corners. Yes, they did. They actually developed um, little pieces that you could bond over the actual crack so you didn't have to replace the whole rear panel. Okay. Uh, well, this is referring back to the eldest. This is so the, the fold away seats at the front, the three, you know, the ones with the pop up three point seats. Yeah, yeah. Seen them. Yeah, we've had a few of yeah, them where. Yeah. It's, it's, if you'll just see it in this stain blue as well, they yeah. don't just have our readings, but they stain blue. Um, available today, Mark has damp videos. Maybe caravans are more damp. Oh. Let's bring Mark in on this and then uh, just quickly cover this. Then, now, um, there's another show on this, Lee, isn't there? Really, yeah, you could, yeah, yeah. It could go on forever and ever, couldn't it? What's your thoughts, yeah. Mark? Yeah, I think there's they're all built by hand at the end of the day, aren't they? They're not they're not built by machines, they're built by people. Uh, so has I scored again? Oh dear. Oh dear. I just, I just find another football team to be honest. It's not just caravan and motor homes that are leaking in stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that back four needs a reseal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mark, carry on. Yeah, carry on, Mark. No, I'm <laughs> I, think, I think we should carry on for a little bit longer. <laughs> so, yeah, no, um, they're put together by people at the end of the day, aren't they? And uh, unfortunately, things can get missed or seals can get broken down. It's, it's a box or a motor home that's going down the road, wiggling and jiggling and bumping around, and um, sales can break down, and that's why you should have it serviced every 12 months. And again, people should be in there looking, looking, and I think it's there's not any difference between a motor home and a caravan at the end of the day. The way that they're built is essentially the same, so you get the same leaks as you will on caravans on motor homes. This is a good question here. Can you recommend a cheaper non basic damp meter? The cheaper damp meters are shocking, aren't they? Uh, some of them are. There are a couple of good ones out there that are around about the 80, 90 quid mark. Um, I can't think of the name off, them, off the top of my head. Um, what I will say with a, with a non-invasive meter, the scanner type meter, if you've got wall brackets in the walls, which you will have metal brackets placed around the walls, it will pick it up okay. as a reading um, and then you suddenly panic and 
you know, you normally hit one of them when a customer suddenly brings you a cup of coffee out and they go, oh, my van's done. No, it's all right. It's just a bracket in the wall. Yeah. But you'll, yeah have to find out the name of the, you'll have to find out the name of those two for the next time. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, that's good. Do you want to just get John up and we can wrap this up? Say again, sorry. Say again. Do you want to just get John on? Yep. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. oh. Do you check your van every week, John, for damp? No, but after 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 Shane's video and listening to you guys just now, um, that, I've, I've found that actually really interesting. And and I, I I like what you say. We could 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 we do a whole show just on damp caravans, damp motorhomes? What remedies? Well, what can you do to prevent it? What, and and like 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 Lee says is. 400 quid outlay. I, I appreciate if you're in the trade, a 400 pound mm. outlay for a, a, a proper damp meter is, is worthwhile. It's, you have to have it in your toolbox. Whereas for Joe public like me, I've got to be honest, I'm not going to spend 400 quid on a damp meter. But we need to, somebody... I'll tell you what we can do then. What might be, might be interestingly, if we can come up with a little checklist of what people could do each month well, to check without having to drop yeah. 400 pound but i'll tell I mean, you what you know I'll tell you, just what, come in. I'll tell you what though lee if i had a pound for every time i pricked myself with a damp beach i'd be a rich man oh yeah yeah <laughs> you have you done, <laughs> have you done the, uh, reaching into a tight area and stuck it in the water pipe yet though no i thought he was no, gonna say well, reaching into a tight area and got a little prick <laughs> Sorry, Lee, quite sure what, what were you going to uh, say there? Yeah, Jeff Foster's just come in for a quick question there, asking uh, what's the best way to store a caravan motorhome level or down at the front or down at the back? That again, I mean, you can be causing yourself an issue there. If you're storing it nose down, you know, you're letting all that water constantly run over the front end of the van. Um, same if it's going off the back. I mean, really, it's. It's that's a difficult one to answer because you, if you put in, if you're constantly I'd, having it running over this, go on, Mark, go on. I would go with a slightly because there's nothing worse than having the water pooling on the roof, and that's what I, I've, I've no. always said to people you're better off with a little bit of a runoff, but not huge, where it's just where it, it's not going to pull on the roof is, is the biggest problem because that's going to degrade sills around roof lights and things like that, yeah. Well, isn't it? There? Yeah, I mean, awning sorry. rails as well, that's another one. I tell you what, um, well, we're going to expand this again. I think in a few weeks' time, don't you think? And and, let's, yeah. And let's, yeah, let's do a checklist or something, or something that we can come up with, uh, and let's see what products are out there. And uh, you've opened a can of worms there, um, Shane. Um, but yeah, yeah. I hope everybody's enjoyed the show. We'll see everybody next week um, with motor home reviews, campsite reviews, Ask Lee, and um, John's videos. Everybody, take Hopefully. care. <laughs> Have a good week all. Bye bye. 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 bye.